Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, the merciful, the compassionate. All praises to Allah, the creator of the universes and their sustainer, the provider of believers and unbelievers. And may his choicest blessings be on the seal of his prophets, the last of his messengers and his holy progeny. And in particular, may his incessant blessings ever continue to flow on that beloved daughter of the holy prophet, on Sayyida Fatima al-Zahra, salamullahi alayha. We have been discussing the khutbah she delivered when Fadak was uh, confiscated from her. And we reached a stage at which we were discussing the shahada of Allah glorified and exalted, which she enunciated. She says in her speech, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. Kalimatun ja'al al-ikhlas ta'wilaha. A sentence of which Allah gave meaning in its sincerity. In other words, if it is sincerely said, it carries meaning. If it is not said fully, sincerely, then it carries no meaning at all. But when sincerity has been made, the basis of the, of the, of, of, of the truthfulness of that enunciation, then, وَذَمَّنَ الْقُلُوبِ مَوْسُولَهَا And hearts have guaranteed its continuity to remain within us from the time we recite that kalima right to the time the soul leaves our bodies. And may Allah so ordain for us that that kalima remains in our hearts up to the last breath. And then she says, and this is where we stopped last time, وَأَنَارْ فِي التَّفْكِيرْ مَعْكُولَهَا And he illuminated our minds with the rationality of that, of that uh, statement. Indeed, indeed. Otherwise, we would not be able to understand the, 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 the existence of Allah glorified and exalted and his Godship. But he illuminated the mind with with rationality of it, how it is it is it is it is rational because Allah has given us reason and has given us a mind. Then He makes sure that on the matters regarding His Tawheed, rationality reigns supreme. Then we do not believe in Allah by blind faith. Then we do not believe in Allah because somebody else believes in Allah, because our parents believe, uh, believed um, in Allah. When, when the, 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 uh, in the days of Jahiliyyah, before Makkah became Muslim, the, the idol worshippers were asked, why are you worshipping these idols? These are stones that you have created by your own hands. According to the Quran, they turned around and said, we saw our forefathers worshipping these idols, so we continue worshipping them. That is not how Allah, glorified and exalted, wants us to worship Him. We do not worship Him because our fathers worshipped Him, because our ancestors worshipped Him. We worship Him because we ourselves are satisfied of His existence and, and, and of His Godship. So, he says, the hearts guarantee the continuity of that, of that, uh, of that, of the divinity of Allah, glorified and, and exalted, in the hearts themselves, and then, and then, it is not only a matter of heart; it is not only a matter of that, of that, of that, uh, of that guarantee that the heart is given. The mind is exactly that. The mind is satisfied of the wahid. And so he, she, she says, وَأَنَارَ فِي التَّفْكِيرِ And Allah illuminated the mind, مَعْقُولَهَا مَعْقُولَهَا with the rationality of Tawheed. So, so, so it's, not, it's not a matter of blind faith anymore. It is not a matter of, of um, a blind man following another blind man. It is a matter of rationality that man indulges in, in with himself intellectually and comes to a conclusion that there must be an Allah and there is an Allah and it is Allah who, 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 who controls and organizes everything that is in the world. And then she says, وَالْمُمْتَعَنُ مِنَ الْأَبْسَارِ رُعْيَتَهُ And he, for, he has forbidden the eyes from seeing him. 
the eyes can't see him at all. Indeed, that is not a possibility. When Hazrat Ibrahim Islam, according to the holy verses, wanted to turn around to Allah, glorified and exalted, and said, can I see you? And Allah says, I'm not an entity that can be seen. But what you can see is my power, my authority. Look at the mountain. And when he did, and he saw what, how the mountain crumbled, he also became, he also fell down and uh, fell down in conscience. Well, so trying to understand the authority of Allah, the power of Allah, only makes us unconscious, makes us collapse and, and become unconscious. And that was the state of that was the state of Nabi Musa, uh, uh, That was an experience that Nabi Musa salam, had. When he asked to see uh, Allah glorified and exalted, so he Allah glorified and exalted has forbidden eyes from seeing him. Indeed, if it was possible to see Allah glorified and exalted, Maadullahi Taala, then Allah would have a shape. Then he would not be omnipresent. Then he would be, if he has a shape and a body, then he is in a particular place. Then he would not be everywhere. But he is everywhere. He is omnipresent. And he would not be an omniscient because if he is confined in one place, he would not. This is what we need to understand. And it's unfortunate that some of us do not understand that and tend to think that he can have a body, that he can have uh, hands or legs. Or... No, we have already examined this, this, uh, this point that those statements in the Quran are metaphorical. Um, I have examined this matter in, in, in some depth in uh, the commentaries on Duai Kumel uh, and so I will not take time here again but only to make the point that that it is not possible to see Allah glorified and exalted because he has no shape he has no he is everywhere and there is no place where he is not he is not present uh, there is no place of which he has no knowledge there is nothing that happens of which he is not aware. So when when you cannot see Allah glorified and exalted, how do you understand his existence? How do you understand his entity? And this is where rationality comes in. And this is why the previous sentence that we just examined. But look at the depth in which the illustrious lady examines the question of the wahid and, 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 and then teaches it and, and, and reminds the com she was addressing companions of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny. In other words, she was discussing, addressing a highest category of, of Muslims. And, and, and she was telling them what exactly Tawheed is. If she can lecture a group of that level, you can imagine what standing, what rational level, what knowledge, what, what, uh, what uh, Iman, what faith, what, what um, uh, depth, Bibi Fatima to Zahra Salamullah had on the question of Tawheed. Tawheed is one of the most difficult questions in Islam. It is the fundamental matter in Islam. And that is the matter in which she she elucidates these points with such command, with such with such um, clarity to, to make things clear to, to, to her audience. Who was supposed to know all these things anyway? Well, the eyes cannot see Allah glorified and exalted. وَمِنَ الْأَلْسُنِ صِفَتُهُ And the tongues have also been forbidden from, from describing his qualities. Uh, because no tongue can describe his qualities fully. We can only describe one quality. That he is Rahim, that he is Rahman, that he is Ghaffar, that he is, uh, that he is um, uh, generous that he is uh, omnipresent, he is omniscient. Yes, but not all his qualities are even known to us. He is beyond our knowledge. He is beyond our capacity to, to appreciate him. And we cannot, we cannot, we cannot um, rationalize his activities. وَمِنَ الْأَلْسُنِ صِفَتُهُ And his qualities, his, 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 uh, his uh, attributes, cannot be fully described by the tongue. The tongue can only catch some of those attributes and even the attributes that the tongue catches. For example, Rahman, just to take that, his mercy, 
and, and, the, and the tongue describes him as merciful because Allah glorified and exalted describes himself as, as merciful from the very beginning of the holy book. The book starts with Bismillahir Rahman, Rahim. So even when we talk of that fundamental quality of Allah, glorified of and exalted, of being merciful, how much of his mercy are we aware of? How much of his mercy can we talk about? He is much, much more merciful than we can even conceive. Because our conception is limited to our standing. And our standing is so limited. Oh, and our knowledge is so, is so confined and circumscribed. He is beyond all that. Hence, hence, it is not possible for any person to describe Allah glorified or exalt, exalted or even describe his qualities in, 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 in their fullness. We can only take an idea of his sifa. Wa min al sifatuhu. Wa min al awham kaifiyatuhu. And even the even even our imagination cannot cannot appreciate the state of divinity this is why it is dangerous to start imagining things about allah glorified and exalted because in trying to imagine him we can go astray the problem about imagining and this is where some of the muslims get into error when you start imagining the qualities of Allah are glorified and exalted, then you imagine within your own competence, within your own sphere of, of, of knowledge. And because our knowledge is so limited, because our minds are so circumscribed, we are not able to deal with, to deal with an entity which is far beyond our, our rationality. We can only understand him within the limits of our, 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 our rationality. And hence, hence, she warns, and she warns us in advance, so that Muslims do not fall into that error. These statements that she is making are not making in vain. She is not repeating statements that are very well known. These are the very statements on which Muslims have fallen into error. So she takes, she goes out of her way to say, وَمِنَ awham." Kaifiyatuhu, even even imagination is 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 forbidden to 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 enunciate the state of Allah glorified and exalted, because it is it is a matter beyond our capacity. We cannot even imagine the state of of Allah glorified and exalted. We only know that which He has told us about Himself in the holy book and through His 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 holy messenger. May peace of Allah ever be on him and his progeny. So, so she cautions us in good time because trying to, trying to imagine Allah glorified and exalted and rationalize divine activities from a level of incompetence, from a level of inadequacy is, is a grave danger because it can lead us into misunderstanding Allah glorified and exalted and creating wrong impressions about him, creating uh, impressions that can mislead us from the path of Allah. So she warns us, she warns even the companions of the Holy Prophet and thankfully through them warns us that, that, that the, the eyes have been, have been uh, stopped. Well, mumtara'u min al-absari ru'yatahu wa min al-alsuni sifatuhu wa min al-awham kaifiyatuhu. So the eyes do not see. The, 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 the tongue does not describe him fully, truthfully or accurately. But not only that, even our imagination does not reach the level of Allah glorified and exalted. And Amir al-Mu'mineen in his khutbah has also taken pain to, to, to emphasize this point so that people don't start um, philosophizing, rationalizing about Allah glorified and exalted from a level of ignorance. From a level, we have just sufficient knowledge to be able to worship Allah glorified and exalted. Because we needed that knowledge of him to, to take cognizance of his existence, to know that he is in authority, that he is our creator, and he is the person we need to worship. He is the power, la hawla wa la quwwata 
illa billahi al-aliyya al-azim. To understand that statement, all that we needed to know is what is all that we have been provided for. Hence, we we must not seek to rationalize Allah's um, qualities any further than that. Then she sets out the 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 creation of Allah glorified and exalted. One matter that she touches. And 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 uh, interestingly, when one opens Nahjul Balagha, the first khutbah that one finds in Nahjul Balagha is on the creation of Allah, glorified and exalted. It's amazing how 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 these personalities are at a level of knowledge in which they even synchronize their their knowledge and 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 their communication of that knowledge to the ummah. She says, "May peace be upon her." ابتدع الأشياء لا من شيء كان قبلها. She he originated Allah or 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 originated the creation of 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 matter of of things. ابتدع الأشياء he created things, but not from things, not from شيء كان قبلها that were in existence before he created them. In other words, when he created things. These things were not even in existence. It was exclusively his own creation, exclusively his own his own shape that he gave to those things, his own, his own qualities that he gave to these things. And hence we see in Dwai Kumail, in which Amir al-Mu'minin salam teaches that in everything that you see, you see the essence of Allah glorified and exalted. Because Allah has created all that on His own, He has not created it because something existed before that. The words that she uses is "la min shayin kana qabliha," not from anything that existed before before He created the, uh, the, that thing. If He created iron, it is not because the qualities of iron existed before He created iron, or if He created copper. It's not because those constituents of copper existed. It is he who combined what was in existence and created copper for his own good reason, and likewise with iron. So Allah, so the the, the illustrious lady makes a strong point there that he did not create anything out of what existed before. Ibtada al ashar, he. He he created. He he started. He initiated the creation of things. Ibtada al asha, la min shayin kana qabliha. But he did not initiate their their creation from things that existed before he created. In other words, the creation originates from him. All creation it originates from him, and there was no thing before Allah glorified and exalted originated it. That is the capacity of Allah glorified and exalted, and it is easy. And as 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 he says, he he has he has um, uh, radiated our minds with sufficient knowledge to be able to understand the Tawheed, and we can understand that if there was, uh, uh, if these things were already in existence by by another entity. ولا من شيء كان قبلها. If these things existed before Allah created them, then somebody else might have created them, or would have created them. And if that somebody else created them, that is shirk. Then there is there is another God, there is another 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 divine authority which created before Allah created. Hence, it is vital. It is vital. That the creation, the original creation of anything that was created, should be creation by Allah Himself, glorified and exalted. And she makes that point. She makes that point very succinctly. She says He originated ibtada al ashya. He created everything, but la min shayin kana qabliha. But not from anything that existed before. So. The constituents of iron, for example, the constituents of steel, the constituent of copper, did not even exist. He created even the constituents of those metals before those metals came into 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 being. That is the level of the wahid that she teaches, and indeed, 
rationality accepts that because otherwise there would be another God. And indeed, a God who created before Allah created, which would not be acceptable. So for Allah to be Allah, as, 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 as we know and understand him, there cannot be another entity which created or shaped things before Allah glorified and exalted shaped them. And then she says, and, and, and he shaped these things and he shaped these things without without following an example of them having already been shaped before he shaped them. So he did not even have a specimen to follow. He did not have a precedent to examine before, before, um, before he, he creates whatever he created. The entire creation is his own creation. The, the planning of what is to be, to be created, the constituents of what is to be created, the, the, the quality of what is to be created, the effect of what is to be created are all his own thinking and his own planning and his own, his own, his own uh, rationality without anything having come into existence before he brought it into existence. That is the level at which Allah's creation stands. And she, she, puts, it, she puts it so beautifully. And he shaped everything that was created. Without there being an example which he used as a, as a, as a precedent, as an example, to enable, to enable him to, 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 to shape that creation. For example, what shape, what shape uh, a certain metal sh should have, a certain ore should have, a certain, a certain mine should have, uh, what, 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 what shape human beings, for example, should have, what shape a bee should have, all are creations that are his own creation and did not exist before he created. It takes the, the level of, of creation of Allah glorified and exalted at a, st at, a, at, a, at a status when there was nothing before Allah created everything. And that is, what, that is how Amir al-Mu'mineen al-Islam describes Allah in Dua'i Kumail. He brought everything into being and everything that came into being is his own shape, is his own, is his, is his own idea, his own, his own uh, um, functioning without any precedent as it were, without any sketch as it were, without any example that he followed in order to make his creation. Kunaha bi qudratihi He created with his own power, with his own strength, with his own position. So, so, so it is not that he depended on another. Indeed, if he were to depend on, on, a, on, a, on a precedent, if he were to depend on a previous sketch or on a previous design, then he would not be a god. There would be another god who created, who made the design, and he was copying what another god designed. He is ala kulli shayin qadir. His, his power is la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There is no strength, there is no power except that of Allah. To, us, to, 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 to think that there was another personality, another entity that created these things. He followed even the shape of those things or even the sketch of those things makes him subordinate, subservient to that other entity and that erodes from divinity of Allah glorified and exalted. That he is la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al azim and he is Allah, la sharika la. The other God cannot be a sharik to him. So there was nothing that existed, nothing that came into, into being until Allah glorified and exalted brought it into being until Allah gave it shape out of his own imagination. Such is the teaching of this illustrious lady on the Tawheed of Allah glorified and exalted. May Allah make us sincere follower and, and, and adherent to this 
illustrious lady who was the beloved daughter of the Holy Prophet himself, peace be upon him and his progeny. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.